Glory to God. Good morning, everyone. Indeed, it is a pleasure to be in the house of God another time. You know, God has been so good to me. Hallelujah. He has brought me all the way out there in Indiana, and he has brought me back really safe. And I'm here this morning to tell him thanks. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He made himself of low repetition to purchase my redemption. How could a king became a servant to save my soul? Greater love of no man than this than that he should lay down his life and without Christ, I am nothing at all. Glory to God. How many of us know that without Christ, we are nothing at all? I did have Christmas. I didn't have a Christless Christmas because I did not take him out of the equation. Because it's all about him. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm going to say that again. He made himself of low repetition to purchase my redemption. How could a king become a servant to save my soul? Greater love hath no man than this. Than that he should lay down his life. And without Christ, I am nothing at all. Without Christ, I am nothing, nothing at all. You may take this whole world it's diamonds it's silver and pearls cause without Christ I am nothing at all I don't care if you are wealthy neither if you are poor you know that Jesus he is the answer to heaven's door. You will always reach out to him. He suffered pain and shame and agony. And without Christ, I am nothing at all. Oh, he died. On the cross for me. It was love why he went to the cross. He was forsaken and left to die. Oh, the crown of fun he was wearing. Every drop of his blood was running. And that's the reason I would serve him every day. For without Christ, I say we are nothing. We are nothing at all. You may take this old world. It's diamonds, it's silver and pearls. Just leave me with Jesus. Without him, I am nothing at all. Without Christ, I am nothing at all. Without Christ, I am nothing. No, I'm nothing at all. So you can take this all world. It's diamonds, it's silver, and pearls. Just leave me with Jesus. I 
because without him, I am nothing at all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you. Without Christ, I am nothing at all. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Let's stand to our feet, if you would, and have your Bible in hand. Open up to Matthew chapter 17, reading verse 21. Today I'm going to be just talking a little bit about fasting and praying. You know, as we, as we know, that the fasting and praying is going to begin in uh, one short week coming up. And, uh, and I really, really believe if you've never fasted and prayed, this is your opportunity to do so. Amen. I believe that God is going to do some wonderful things. Matthew chapter 17, verse 21 in the Word of God. I'm reading the King James Version today on purpose. Um, some of the other later translations leave these very important words out prayer and fasting amen verse 21 the bible says how be it this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting let us pray heavenly father we thank you lord and we praise your mighty name lord god that we're going to be fasting and praying as a church i pray lord that you do wonderfully great things lord god we want to see your hand move like never before in this ministry father i pray that people would be excited about it lord god i pray that we'd all be enthused about it lord i pray that you would just break the shackles of any addictions in the church lord i pray father god that you would just uh, heal people who need healing lord god whether it's uh, emotional healing Healing, our physical healing, a, a mental healing, whatever it might be. We just pray, Lord God, that, Lord, we would stop bad habits, Lord, and, and establish good habits to have a closer relationship with you. We come against a spirit of apathy and indifference in the name of Jesus. Help us to know church is so very important to come to every single week, Lord God. Help us to understand Bible studies are important and prayer is important, Father. Help us to focus on you every single day of our lives. And Lord, we thank you for that, Lord. Move by your spirit in this message, Holy Spirit. As I decrease, please increase, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. You may be seated. I'm going to go back to Matthew chapter 17, and I'm backing up a little bit to read 14 to let you know basically what was happening in this particular time. Amen. How many of you know that fasting and prayer is, it makes more power in your life? Amen. When you pray and fast, uh, God hears you. It's almost like you're on a, a, a closer frequency to the Lord. I remember those old cars. Remember those old Cadillacs? As soon as you turn the key, the antenna would go up in the back automatically. To, to pick up the radio station. Our, our cars don't have that now. They're more sophisticated, but, but it's, it's kind of like that. It's like your, your antenna, as you fast and pray as, as, in the Lord, your antennas kind of go up. You're more sensitive to the Holy Spirit of God. You can hear him more clearer. There's no static going on. Uh, Sister Joy mentioned in the opening scripture reading, there's a lot of distractions in the world we live in, isn't there? There's a lot of static. You know, Satan does not want us to fast and pray. He does not want us to get into the Word of God. He doesn't want us to be serious about our relationship with God. But these are the last days. And if we're going to do this, we've got to do it now. Now is the time. Amen? Praise God. We can't be procrastinators and just wait. We've got to say, Lord, I'm going to do it today. I'm going to fast and pray whether anybody else is or not. Amen? Verse 14 in the Word of God, it says, And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. For oftentimes he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer with you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall, re and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. 
Now, how many, you know, you, you know I, look at, I look at this scripture. So this is what's going on in the Bible, okay, if you don't understand the King James very well. This, 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 this man, his, his kid is demon-possessed. He brings him over to the disciples to be, to be, for the disciples to cast this demon out. Disciples are praying, and they can't do it. Then he's got to take his kid and bring him to Jesus and to, to cast out the devil. And Jesus casts out the devil. So what happened? Jesus, the disciples later on say, hey, Lord, why couldn't we do this? He first of all says, because of your unbelief. That's interesting. They're walking with Jesus all these, all these years in time, and yet they don't have enough belief. How I many you know prayer and fasting causes us to believe in the Lord even much more? It causes us to have a closer relationship with the Lord. Amen? It, it causes us to say, Lord, I am serious with you. I thank you that I fast and pray. You know, sometimes we pray for something over and over and over, and we seem not to get any answers. But yet the next step would be to fast and pray and expect God to move. Amen? Have you ever fasted and prayed about something? Somebody might say, well, you know, I, I have a tough time fasting and praying. I mean, you know, I love my food and so forth. And yeah, but it's a sacrifice. Amen? We can put down the fork and pick up the word of God. Put down the fork, amen, and get on our knees and pray. And say, Lord, I am going to fast and pray, and I know great things are going to happen as a result in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. You know, before you can really, really have an effective fast and prayer time, you must deal with yourself. you got to really, really, don't focus on other people. Focus on yourself. Lord, is there anything in my life that is not pleasing to you? Is there anything in my life that I need to be doing more? Amen. Is there anything in my life, Lord, that you need to remove or that I need to be thinking about something different. Whatever it is, Lord, I want to please you. Amen? I want to repent from sin. I want to walk with you, Lord God. I want to live a holy life and, and grow in my relationship with you. So we really have to deal with ourselves. Amen? The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So if we're living an unrighteous life, our prayer life really isn't going any higher than the ceiling. Amen. So we've got to be living a, a life that is pleasing to the Lord, amen, for our prayers to get answered. We have to ask ourselves a question, are you 100% committed to the Lord in your relationship with him? How many you know God doesn't want a 99%? He doesn't want 95%. He wants all of us. Amen. Are there any areas in your life that you're not letting the Lord go in? Amen. In other words, okay, Lord, I, you know, you can have me in this area, but not over here in this area because I want to do my own thing over there. How many know we got to do God's thing, not our thing? Live the way he wants us to live. How much do we really love Jesus? Is he first in our life, in every area of our life? Matthew 6.33, the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God in his righteousness, and what? And all these things shall be added unto you. I'm just wondering right now, you know, in America, there's a lot of church, a lot of local churches, and all over the world there is. I'm wondering... How many people might have said, you know something, I'm seeking after the things, and then I'll seek after God once I get the things. But it doesn't work that way. We put God first, and he takes care of the things. Amen? See, a lot of Christians are seeking after the things. Once I get the things, then I'll go to church. Once I get the things, then I'll be serious with God. Once I get the things, then I'll be all set. No, we've got to put God first, and he's going to take care of the stuff. We can't, you know, any stuff we have in this earth, it's temporary and it's going away anyway. The only thing that's eternal is relationship with God. He's the only constant we have, our Lord Jesus Christ. He's there all the time, forever and ever and ever. So we've got to be investing our energies, our time, our talent, everything within our relationship with him. He's got to be first, amen, because I'll tell you something, a hundred years from now, none of us are going to really care about anything but what we did with Jesus today, amen. because we're, our destiny revolves around knowing Jesus or not knowing Jesus. The only way we're getting to heaven is having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, amen? Praise be to God. You know, do your every, let me ask a question. Do your everyday actions, behaviors, and decisions show that you love God? How long would it take somebody to, to say, you must be a Christian? I can see that you're, uh, in the morning, you're reading the Bible, you're praying. I can see that you're going ahead and you're, you're going to church, and I can see that you, you, you love God. You must be a believer. Amen? How I many know, oh, praise God, we, we've got to live that lifestyle of being a believer. Glory be to God. What are we going to fast from? 
You know, um, Brother Keith was mentioning earlier, you know, he's, 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 he's got a little, a little niche with Twinkies. <laughs> Somebody say Twinkies. And he says, I'm going to fast Twinkies for 21 days, and it's not, going to be ha- it's not going to be easy. Amen. Praise God. Well, how many you know he'll probably see billboards with Twinkies all over him during the fast? Uh, maybe they'll have an ad on TV suddenly with Twinkies or whatever. But whatever we're fasting, amen, how many you know we've got to be steadfast and say, I am not going to touch this thing in the name of Jesus. I'm going to get on my knees. I'm going to be fasting and praying instead. Whatever it might be, amen, giving up something for the purpose of really glorifying God. The the book of Joel, chapter 2, verses 12 and 13, the Bible says, that is why the Lord says, turn to me now while there is time. Give me your hearts. How many of you know God wants our hearts? He says, come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. How do we come to God? With fasting, amen? With weeping, with mourning. Don't tear your clothing in your grief, but tear your hearts instead. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He is eager to relent and not punish. How I many know what God wants us? You know, he, he doesn't want to punish us. He's slow to get angry. He wants us to go ahead and repent from sin. His unfailing love is always there with us. Amen? He loves us unconditionally, and that's an awesome thing. Amen? When we pray and fast, it's sowing to the Spirit. Amen? Fasting is the greatest spiritual discipline for seeking God's intervention. Combined with prayer, they together make up the most critical weapons of spiritual warfare and deliverance in our lives. While we cannot manipulate God to fulfill our desires exactly as laid out to Him, fasting always, when done the biblical way, moves God to fulfill His intended will over the matters. So what does it do? When we fast and pray, the Holy Spirit leads and guides us of what to pray for, of who to pray for, how we're supposed to pray for them. Amen? He, he moves by His Spirit, and He puts thoughts in our minds in order to pray for something. Just last night, as a matter of fact, you know, I, I couldn't sleep for a period of time. And suddenly, uh, this name came out of nowhere. I have no idea who this person is. God gave me the, a name, and I said, Lord, why am I thinking of that name? I have no idea who that is. Then I was going to turn over and I was going to try to get back to sleep. And then I thought, wait a minute. And the spirits kind of prompted me, pray for that person. And I said, there's got to be a reason for this because it's kind of weird. So I started praying for that man, whoever that man was. Amen. I don't know where his situation was. I just felt the spirit of suicide that he was going to commit. I don't even know who he was. And all I know is this, you could call me crazy or what, but I believe that was the spirit of God telling me to pray for this person because I need somebody to pray for him now. We can't, we can't procrastinate. Whenever the Spirit moves, it might sound kind of funny, but we've got to say, I'm going to start praying. Praise God. I don't want to miss this. I don't want to miss the boat here. I want to be used of the Lord to pray for people, to be saved, to keep people out of the horrible place called hell. Amen? To go ahead and see people healed in the name of Jesus. To see people have, be born again and have that relationship with Christ. Our Lord Jesus um, said fasting would be necessary for his disciples after he ascended. Matthew 9 and 15 points this out. Jesus, you know, people were complaining to Jesus in the Scripture. They would say, hey, how come your disciples don't fast and pray? They're reading and eating, and what's going on? This is how Jesus replied. Do wedding guests mourn while celebrating with the groom? Of course not. But someday the groom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. How many know that Jesus, right now we know, is seated at the right hand of God the Father in heaven? He is interceding. He's praying for us right now. Do you know that even if people aren't praying for you, that the Holy Spirit is praying for you and Jesus, the Bible says, is praying for you? Praise God. You know, that's a good thing. I'll tell you what, I want Jesus to pray for me. I need it. Amen. Praise be to God, you know. The ministry of Paul, as we see in the Bible, started after a period of fasting and praying. Acts chapter 13, verses 2 and 3, the Bible says, One day, as these men were worshiping the Lord in fasting, notice it says in fasting, the Holy Spirit said, dedicate Barnabas and Saul for the special work to which I have called them. So after more fasting and prayer, the men laid their hands on them and sent them on their way. Amen. Notice when they started fasting and praying, the Holy Spirit then spoke. If they were distracted in life and doing their own thing, you know, and so forth, they would have never heard from the Holy Spirit of God. <clears throat> Amen? So one way that when we fast and pray, we can really hear clearly what the Spirit of God is telling us. 
Amen. They continued to fast and pray in Acts 14, verse 23. It says, Paul and Barnabas also appointed elders in every church. With prayer and fasting, they turned the elders over to the care of the Lord in whom they had put their trust. Amen. Now, how many know when somebody says something to you, when you go eat or when you do something, that is an indication. It's not an if, but it's a when. In other words, you should be doing that on a regular basis. Notice what the Bible says in Matthew 6, 16, the words of Jesus. He said, and when you fast, now I want to point out what he didn't say. He didn't say, and if you fast. How many of you know when and if are two different words? When you fast is a presumption you're going to fast. You're a believer. You're a Christian. You're born again. This is something you're going to be doing on a regular basis. When you fast... Notice he says that. And when you fast, don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do. For they try to look miserable and disheveled so people will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that is the only reward they will ever get. Remember the Pharisees in the Bible? They just lo- they were full of themselves. <laughs> Amen. They were full of so much pride. When they prayed, they didn't just go secretly praying somewhere in a prayer closet. They went out on the street corners with their big robes on and lifted their hands. And they wanted everybody to look at them and say, wow, how holy they are. What a great guy that is. Look at him praying. Well, the Lord says that basically is their only reward they're going to get. God's not even going to hear that mess. Amen? So the Bible says when we fast, you know, don't go around telling anybody, oh, look at me, I'm fasting, I'm so holy and so forth, and whatever the case might be. Amen? But you go ahead and this is a thing between you and God. It's not something to impress other people with. It's something to go ahead and to say, Lord, I know you're going to come through. I'm going to fast and pray. Have your own way, Lord God. God is always ready to speak uh, to us and to help us. For our sake, to tune ourselves to his wavelength in order to hear from him and effectively walk with him. Amen. It's, you know, fasting and prayer is, isn't a situation where, you know, we kind of, it's not like Monty Hall, let's make a deal. How many of us remember that program, Let's Make a Deal, years ago? Remember that, Monty Hall? Monty Hall would come on with his long, long microphone. It was on a big stick like this big. It had a little microphone head like this. And, you know, he's like, let's make a deal, you know, and so forth. When you fast and pray, you're not, you're not, you're not making a deal with God. You're praying under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in his will for your life and for others' lives. In other words, it's praying, it's praying the way that God wants you to pray. It's not a gimme, gimme, gimme prayer. <clears throat> it's not a list of, okay, Lord, I want this and I want this and I want that and I want that. And I'll tell you what, I'm fasting and praying, so you owe it to me. I've gone without food now for two days, so you owe me. That's not what it's about. As a matter of fact, God's not even going to hear a prayer like that. It's when we come to him and say, Lord, I am a vessel in the kingdom of God. I want to be used of you. Show me who to pray for, what to pray for, how to pray for them. Amen? Show me, Lord God, so that I can be used of you. Because I'll tell you something, when you pray down here, it changes things in the heavenly realm. God needs intercessors to pray. Because whenever something happens in the physical, it's already been going on in the spiritual So we have to know and understand there's a major war going on with demons and with God's angels and so forth and, 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 you know, and trying to fight for souls and and so forth. All this stuff is going on in the heavenly realm. But when we go ahead and we fast and pray and we start binding and rebuking in the name of Jesus, things happen, amen? But God needs people on this earth to change things that are happening in the spiritual realm and as subsequently in the physical realm as well. Amen? So he wants people to pray. Amen? How many know prayer is so very, very important? Amen? Praise be to God. The Holy Spirit in the spirit part of us has dominance in moving in the area of prayer or communion with God that we cannot get, excuse me, into any other way but by fasting and praying. It is moving into the spirit and walking in the spirit. This does not mean being foolish and turning our our reasoning off. It is being wise with the mind of Christ while being submissive to the Holy Spirit. Amen? You know, it's it's denying our fleshly desires. You know, how many of you know our flesh screams? It's it's like a little two-year-old kid wanting that blue balloon in Walmart, and mommy won't give him the blue balloon. So he starts screaming, I want it right now! Our flesh is kind of like that, isn't it? 
<clears throat> you know, I want that Twinkie. I want it now. Right, Brother Keith? <laughs> I, I want that donut. I, uh, I want those carbs now. You know, sometimes you're fasting and praying, and all of a sudden weird things start to happen. All of a sudden you see a TV commercial, and the very thing you're fasting and praying comes on TV. Suddenly somebody you don't know hasn't talked to you for the last five years calls you and says, hey, I want to take you out to dinner. <laughs> I can't eat that food right now. I'm fasting and praying. Amen? Sometimes things will happen because Satan, one of the most important spiritual weapons we have against the devil is fasting and praying. He hates to see that. He didn't even want people to come to church today to hear this message. And he'll try to fight people from watching YouTube later on when this goes on television and, and, and get them all distracted. Why? Because he knows that you get some serious Christians getting on their knees and believing he's got to take off in, in the name of Jesus real fast. And his kingdom of darkness is going to get bombarded by our prayers. There's going to be bombs coming down, blowing up demons and, and, and disrupting his work in which he wants to do. Amen? Praise God. You know, we have to know and understand. Now, what do we do when we're fasting? A fasting program ought to include prayer, intercession, reading of God's word, which is one way of listening to God, praying for the people in our church on the calendar each day, that you have the calendars, and allowing God to speak from within us. It could also include worshiping him with songs of praise. Perhaps take long walks with the Lord in prayer. Allowing God to speak from within is not waiting to hear a strange voice. It is God speaking from within your spirit. His spirit dwells in you, so he speaks from within. And listen to this. You will be able to grasp matters in your life and lives of others in ways you never perceived them before. It's kind of like, you know, you just have a really strong signal with the Holy Spirit. It's like you're in tune with him. He is sharing the heart of God with you. This is what he wants in your life. This is what he wants in other people's lives. Amen? Fasting and praying brings you to a new spiritual level. It's something that, that you know, you could have been praying for something for a long, long time and nothing's happening. And when you start fasting and praying, all of a sudden things start happening. Because remember what I just read earlier. This kind does not come out but by fasting and praying. There are some things that aren't going to stop in our lives unless we fast and pray. Amen? And that's something that God wants us to do. Amen? Praise God. He says, when you fast. He didn't say if you fast. So God is speaking. God speaks to us through, through fasting and praying. You know, let me just say this. Make sure that your tablet, your iPhone, your, your, your Samsung, whatever your phone you have is off when you're fasting and praying. Turn the television off. Amen? Because, you know, if you have your phone on, what's going to happen is you're going to be in the middle of fasting and praying, and I guarantee you somebody's going to send you a text message, and it's probably going to be somebody you don't even know. Why? The devil wants to distract you from concentrating on your prayer in fasting and praying. Amen? So how many of you know the electronics have to, have to be turned off? It will not kill you not to watch Facebook for five minutes. <laughs> so, amen? You need to focus on God's book, not Facebook. <laughs> the Word of God, amen? Somebody say glory to God, amen. You know, the, 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 you know we got we to say, Lord, I don't want to be distracted. I want to go ahead and really, really pay my undivided attention to you when I'm fasting and praying. I don't want any distractions whatsoever, amen? You really, really need to concentrate and really, really focus on the Lord. I just want to conclude this message with five important points to fasting. The power of fasting. What is fasting? I mentioned that earlier. Fasting is going without food to pursue and are focused on something more important in your life. Amen? Now, number one, fasting helps subject our bodies to our spirits. 1 Corinthians 9 and 27. The Bible says the Apostle Paul saying, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. So what is fasting? It helps to subject our bodies to our spirits. It's telling your body, it's telling your flesh, you are not going to get your desires that you want. Instead, I'm going to focus on the Lord and pray and fast. Amen? Somebody say glory to God. Now, what did the devil do when Jesus 
was fasting and praying after he was baptized by John the Baptist and sent out by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. The first temptation was, here's Jesus is fasting and praying. Satan goes over to Jesus and says to him what? If you're the son of God, then turn that stone into bread. So what's happening? The devil is a liar, as we know. He's a deceiver. He knows that Jesus is fasting and praying. He wants Jesus to break his fast. Amen? And he knows if Jesus broke his fast, he would be disobeying the Father. So what he's doing is, he says, no, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That's how he answers the devil. So how many know that there's going to be temptations and so forth, but how many know we got to shun those temptations in the name of Jesus? Amen? Praise God. Number two, fasting is disciplining the body, mind, and the spirit. Fasting is disciplining the body, the mind, and the spirit. Proverbs 25, 28. A person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. <clears throat> How many know we all have self-control? <clears throat> so he said, I just lost control. I just couldn't help myself. The devil made me do it. The devil can't make you and I do anything. He can tempt us. And he could, he could try to make whatever temptation look good, but he can't force us to heed to the sin of the temptation. He does not have that power. Satan also cannot read our mind. Amen? He cannot re God reads our mind. God knows our every thought. But the devil cannot read your mind. Isn't that good news? Amen. Praise God. You know, he can, he can study our behavior. He can assign a demon to, to keep an eye on us and say, okay, he takes a shower at this time, he shaves at that, sh at that time, goes to church at that time, does this at that time, and so forth, but he cannot read right here. Amen. Praise God. Because God is mighty, much, much, much more powerful than the enemy, than the devil. I mean, sometimes, you know, it's like we think in our mentality, God is here and Satan's there. No, 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 no. God is ultimately <laughs> billions of miles way up there and Satan is way, way down there. We give him way too much power. But in saying that, on the other hand, too, you don't play with the devil either. You don't have a, a rap session. You don't, you don't try to convince him not to come against you. you. You take your sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, and come right at him in the name of Jesus. Satan tempts you with the sexual thought. You go ahead and you, you claim the word of God right after him, and he's got to go in the name of Jesus. Amen? Anything at all. The thought li our thought life has to be pure. Isn't that right? Amen? You start thinking about something, amen, you don't have to entertain the thought. One preacher one time said it this way. He says, you know something? You may be thinking about something that is lustful or bad. You don't have to continue to think about it because you can think about something else right away. We can allow birds to fly over our heads when we're outside, but we shouldn't allow them to make a nest in our hair. Right? So in other words, our thought life is so very, very important. We have the mind of Christ, the Bible says, and so our thoughts need to line up with what God's Word says. Amen. Praise God. Number three, fasting is subordinating our flesh desires to our spirit desires. Amen? Galatians 5 and 17, for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. Now, how many know there's a spiritual battle going on in our minds? The flesh against the spirit. Amen. We want to do what's right. Then the flesh kicks in. We want to do what's right. In the you know. But how many of you know that we've got to say, Lord, I want to go ahead and I want to have my mind on you, on the Spirit of God. I want to have my mind on you, and therefore I'm not feeding the desires of my flesh. Because our thought life has a lot to do with that. Years ago, they did subliminal advertising on television. You're watching your favorite TV program, and all of a sudden you start getting hungry, and you're like, what in the world am I getting hungry for all of a sudden? In fact, it's kind of specific. I'm getting hungry, but I want Burger King. Why is that? So you go back what they did back then. They're not allowed to do it now, although I don't know if it still happens or not, but according to the government, they're not allowed to do that. They would take one frame of that particular program, and they would have a picture of a Whopper. And as you're watching it, your subconscious mind would record it, even though your conscious mind couldn't bring it out and say, I just saw a picture of a Whopper. So now you start getting hungry because it goes into your brain, it's subliminal, and now you get hungry and you start going to Burger King for some Whoppers. So basically what that was doing is kind of deceiving you into, into buying their product of whatever it was. Somebody say amen. How I many you know God has created our brains so wonderfully? 
Amen. And, you know, I'll tell you something. You know, just ask God to, Lord, I want to live according to your word. I want to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. And it's a transformation every day. It's not a one-time deal. I'm transformed. Praise God. I'll never have another bad thought. That's it. No, it's everyday situation. You got to keep your mind on the things of God. Amen. Praise be to God. We have to say, Lord, cleanse me, O oh God. Let me think about, let me, let me, let me think about the way you how you want me to think about things. Not the way I want to think about things, but the way you want me to think about those things. Number four, fasting helps set the priorities in our lives. Matthew 6, I cited earlier, it says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So we put God first, and he always comes through. And finally, number five, fasting is longing after God. Psalm 63, verses 1 and 2, the psalmist, uh, Psalm of David, says, when, uh, when, he was in the wilderness of, when he was in the wilderness of Judah, this is David when he was in the wilderness of Judah, it says, O God, you are my God, early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. For I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Amen. I just want to encourage you. I don't know if you, you might be saying, you know, Pastor, I've never really fasted and prayed like that. There are different types of fasts that we can do in a practical way. This is what's called the Jewish fast. A Jewish fast is eating at dinner at 6 o'clock at night and then waiting 24 hours to eat next at 6 o'clock the next day. Okay, that's one fast that you can do. Somebody else can say, okay, I want to fast this particular thing that, that I really enjoy doing or whatever the case is. You can fast that. But the bottom line is that you've got to put away, put down the food, put down the fork and pick up the word and get on your knees. I mean, if we just say, okay, I'm going to fast, so what am I doing? I'm fasting this thing over here or whatever. But you're not praying. You're destroying the whole purpose of it. It's just going to lose some calories, amen? But fasting is, is saying, Lord, you know, let's say you go to work. You have a, a half-hour lunch break. I'm not going to eat my lunch today. For that half hour, I'm going to walk around the grounds of my workplace and I'm going to be praying. Amen? Or maybe, maybe it's dinner time. Maybe it's your break time. You have 15 minutes off. No, I'm going to fast and I'm going to walk around and I'm going to be praying. I'm going to put that cup of coffee down, and I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to be praying. Whatever it might be, amen? So, I mean, when we pray, but we have to pray in faith that things are going to happen, amen? How I many know we want to see God glorified in this church? We want to see him glorified in this ministry. We want to please our Heavenly Father in everything we do, say, and behave in. We just want to go ahead and just magnify his name, amen? That's what it's all about. Now, next Sunday, amen, we're going to be, like I mentioned, we mentioned earlier, if at all possible, please wear white clothing if you can and so forth. As Sister Agnes said, don't not come because you don't have something white to wear because we're going to be having communion, amen. It's the first day the fasting and prayer starts, and please pray for the individuals on that, on that calendar. Really, really important, amen, to be praying and, and, and to really believe God because God's going to come through with some awesome things. Amen. Praise be to God. Again, the candlelight service is this coming Tuesday at 10 o'clock. If you can, please come out to that. It's going to be a blessing to be on our knees to bring in the year 2020, another decade of our time. Isn't that awesome? Somebody give the Lord a hand and let's have a word of prayer. Amen. <clears throat> Dear Father, we thank you, Lord, and we praise your mighty name, Lord, as we gear up for, to fast and pray. I thank you, Lord God, and we praise you for the things that you're going to do in advance already, Lord God. We thank you, Lord. We're going to see wonderful things happening. And Lord, we, we, we magnify you. Show us, O oh Holy Spirit, who and what to pray for and how to pray for them. I pray that you would have your perfect way and will, Lord God, and we just thank you for that, Father. We magnify your name. Lord, I pray for those who are not in church this morning for whatever reason. I just pray, Lord God, that we'd see them very soon and worship and lord we thank you for that and we ask all these things in the mighty precious name of jesus and all god's people said amen and amen if you like prayer please come praise the lord amen. hallelujah glory. glory to god glory. amen how many of you know we got to be focused Yes, particularly as we're entering into a new year, mm. we gotta be focused. That's right. Yes. Amen. Can you hear me better now? Yes. Amen. Praise God. Now we're going to read from Hebrews 12, verses 1 to 2. 
Hebrews 12, 1 to 2 from the King James Version says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Now we're going to read that same scripture, but this time from the Amplified Version. And it says, there, that is Hebrews 12, 1 to 2, Amplified Version this time. It says, Therefore then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who have borne testimony to the truth, let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance that's unnecessary weight and that sin which so readily, deftly, and cleverly clings to us and entangles us. And let us run with patient endurance and steady and active persistence the appointed course of the race that is set before us, looking away from all that will distract to Jesus, who is the leader and the source of our faith, giving the first incentive for our belief. And is also its finisher, bringing it to maturity and perfection. He for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him, endured the cross, despising and ignoring the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Amen. I read it from the Amplified so you would hear it louder, Amen. what it's actually Amen. saying. Amen. Then 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses, verse 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. And Isaiah 50 verse 7 says, For the Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. Praise the Lord. God wants us to set our hearts on his word, and not be distracted by circumstances, experiences, or adversity. The psalmist said in Psalm 119, verse 69, it says, The godless spread lies about me, but I focus my attention on what you are saying. Also, Romans 4, 19 says, Abraham didn't focus on his own impotence and say it's hopeless. This hundred-year-old body could never have a child nor did he survey Sarah's decades of infertility and give up. No. In the New Testament, the Bible talks about Jesus in Luke 9.51. And it came to pass, when the time was come that he, sh he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Why was his face so steadfastly uh, set on, on his destination? He knew that was his last visit to Jerusalem. And this time, it was for his life. He was going to the cross to die for the sins of the world. And he wasn't going to let anyone distract him from it. In our world today, there are so many distractions. But we must remain focused on the dream, the vision that the Lord has put in our hearts. We must have a tunnel vision towards God's agenda. It's the only way to win. Some Christians have found themselves being distracted by too many things. They are distracted by the state of the economy and several other happenings around them. They can't accomplish much in that way. When you are a man or woman of purpose and vision, you are not perturbed by the economies or, econo by the economics or economies of this world because you know that you are not of this world. So, as we enter into the year 2020, let us set our focus on Jesus the author and finisher of our faith. Then we can most assuredly know that nothing in this world or that is of this world can place a limit on us or cause us to be disadvantaged. Disadvantage. Therefore, set your sail 
and rule your world. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Father, I thank you for the high calling with which you called us in Christ Jesus. Our eyes are on you, the author and perfecter of our faith. We don't see shadows. We are walking in your perfect and destiny for our lives. Victorious in all our ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hi, I'm Craig Matheson, pastor of Changing Lives Christian Church here in Haverhill, Massachusetts. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I just want to say right up front, thank you so much for tuning in and watching our church services today. I want to share a quick scripture, a Bible scripture, in, found in the book of Matthew, chapter 28. And these are the words of Jesus. And it says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commandments I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. This is called what we refer to as the Great Commission. The Great Commission is to share God's word, the good news of salvation, with everybody that we know. And that's one of the reasons we're on TV here at in Haverhill, Massachusetts, from our church, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with many folks like yourself. Now, I just want to share a little bit about our church, about our church services specifically, what we do during the week, what our Sunday morning service is all about, and so forth. Many people have asked me, well, Pastor, how long is your church service? What happens during your church service? We see you preaching on TV, but it's an hour long in totality, but how long is the church service in itself? Well, let me, let me get into some details. First of all, every Sunday morning, what we do is we have we start at 11 o'clock. Our church service time on Sunday morning is at 11 o'clock in the morning. And the first thing we do in our church service is we open up in a word of prayer. Prayer is very important. After that, we sing one worship song. And it's contemporary Christian worship music is what we use in our church. And we do some hymns sometimes. Now, as we sing the songs, we have two big screen TVs that are in the front of our congregation and in the front of our altar rather and those screens have all the words of the lyrics of the songs on them so that way anybody at all can come in and follow along even if they hear for the first time after that first song is done we have a volunteer from my church one of our members come up and do an opening scripture reading and prayer verse after that happens we go ahead and we do three more worship songs contemporary christian uh, music or some hymns mixed in from that point on, what we do is we, we, come, we take up an offering, uh, tithes and offerings, then we have testimony time in our church. That is, the floor is opened up to the sanctuary, to the congregation, meaning that, you know, anybody can raise their hand and say, Pastor, I'd like to give a testimony. And then anybody can give, um, you know, a testimony if they, if they prefer to. They don't have to, but they can if they want to. After that, I come up front to the pulpit and I start preaching the Word of God. I preach for about 40 to 45 minutes in that basic area, as if you view me on TV, you see how long basically I preach for 40, 45 minutes. Now, during the preaching, or before the preaching starts, we have children's church, which is awesome. We have a room dedicated to children's church upstairs here in the church, and we have a couple of very dedicated teachers who teach children's church. So in other words, the time that I get up to preach, your children will be dismissed and they can go to children's church and be taught the word of God from our children's church teachers. Or if you prefer, you can allow them to stay with you here in the sanctuary. That's up to you. You're the parent, totally up to you. But we do have that available. After I'm done preaching, uh, we close the service, but we have an informal altar call. What I mean by informal is, I stay up front for a few minutes, and what happens is if anybody comes up for individual prayer, I'm here to pray for you individually, depending on whatever prayer need that you may have. After that happens, what we do is we have some donuts and coffee here at the church after every service so people can hang out here for a little while and have some fellowship and talk. And incidentally, the church is open at 9 o'clock every Sunday morning, 9 o'clock we open early so that people can come in and they can spend some time in the sanctuary in prayer before the service starts. At 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, we have donuts and coffee that is prepared for anybody at all that wants to come in and have some fellowship in our fellowship hall and just have a few donuts and coffee and chat a little bit before the service. 
so that is that is kind of what happens here on Sunday morning. The last Sunday of every month, we have a fellowship dinner. That is, we ask everybody in the congregation, or those who can, to bring a covered dish. And we have kind of a potluck type lunch. And what we do is after the Sunday morning service ends, the last Sunday of each month, what we do is we have in our fellowship hall here in the church, we have, um, you know, we eat a nice dinner together and we have some fellowship in the fellowship hall as well. So it's a real blessing. Also, midweek service, we have Wednesday night Bible studies here at the church, which are awesome. We go through the Bible verse by verse. And what we do is an open discussion Bible study, so anybody at all can ask questions, and we go verse by verse in the Bible. It's an informal um, Bible study. It's not like a real formal thing. Anybody, again, anybody can ask a question or whatever the case is or, or, or share their input on whatever we're studying in the Bible. Um, and we basically sit around a table, like a big, big oval conference table um, with a bunch of desk chairs and so forth. Right now, we're small uh, in our Bible studies group, but we're gonna, we intend to be growing, so eventually we'll outgrow that room and we'll be in here in the sanctuary, which is okay. But it's an informal time where we can ask questions about the Bible, we teach the Word of God verse by verse, and it's really awesome to be here in Bible study. So that's Wednesdays at 7 o'clock. Thursday morning, bright and early, 7.30 in the morning, we have prayer meeting here at the church. If you work third shift, or if you work maybe in a nursing home or something, and you're like, wow, I'd love to go to a prayer meeting right after work because I get out of work at 7 o'clock in the morning. I work the 11 to 7 shift. Perfect opportunity for you to come here at Changing Lives Christian Church and join us in prayer. We're here at 7.30 in the morning, every Thursday morning, and we come in the sanctuary and we pray to the Lord. If you have a prayer request, by all means, Please email us your prayer request. The email address is there at the bottom of the screen. We will most definitely lift up your prayer request before the Lord. I just felt like I needed to share a little bit of what happens in our church services and what goes on. And incidentally, uh, you know, I'm the pastor of the church. I'm no better than anybody else, even though I have the title pastor or anything like that. So if you would like to email me or give me a call, and say, Pastor Craig, I'm interested in attending your church. I want to eventually become a member, but I have a few more questions. Uh, what could, you know, could I set up an appointment with you to ask you some questions? I'm more than willing, more than willing. Just email me or give me a call and we'll most definitely set up a time. You can come in my office here and you, we can sit down and chat. You can ask me as many questions as you want and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. I hope that you have a fantastic day today. Thank you for tuning in once again to see us here at church service at Changing Lives Christian Church. And may God bless you.